Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is TST Radio. I am your host, Marcus Johnson. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to uh, start off with some HBUC, <coughs> HBCU football. Um, the CIAA has reported they will be moving this football championship game out of the state of North Carolina. The new location has is yet unknown. The NCII basketball tournament will be moving also. The cause of this is, I know, if you can recall back when North Carolina where it was going through all that, um, this, the bathrooms with transgenders trying to use the women's bathrooms and restrooms and all that. So, they're losing a lot of money because they don't want to allow a person of transgender to have the choice to use the male or the female. They want you to use the bathroom that you were, that the gender describes you when you was born. They don't want you to use, they don't want you to come in as a, a male dressed as a woman trying to use a woman's bathroom. But this law has really, is this law has lost North Carolina, a lot of money. It's um, the law is called the HB2 law. It limits individuals from using restrooms designated for the gender which they were born. That's how it's stated. Of uh, like I said, it's losing the state a lot of money. I would rethink this. I really would rethink this because I think the ACC is moving their championship game also. So that's a lot of money that the state of North Carolina is losing. And I don't think they want to lose that type of money. If you can recall, the NBA did move the 2017 uh, All-Star Weekend from North Carolina because of the same law. Do you know how much money that they revenue? Come on, man. You got to... Hey, you, you gotta you gotta make that money. That's you're losing a lot of money. You're losing a lot of money. Uh, moving on to some um, NCAA football tonight. We have Houston and UConn. Uh, on last year, UConn was Houston's only loss. Uh, Houston only lost one game. Like I said, uh, both teams are coming in with some. High power offense is led by their quarterbacks. Houston is coming in as a big favorite in this game. Uh, their quarterback, uh, Greg Ward Jr., is off to a great year. He's 67 for 102 with 936 yards, five touchdowns, and two interceptions. On the other side, we have um, Sharif's. He for UConn, he's 79 for 118 with 819 passing yards, two two touchdowns, with two interceptions. Uh, UConn's defense has kind of struggled coming up to this game. They're giving, they're averaging, giving up about 381 yards a game now. Um, Houston defense is coming in, playing very good. Their uh, their defense is stopping the run very well this year. Uh, they only gave up 37 yards on the year and run on um, run defense. So that's great. So if UConn can't run the football, which their running back, their starting running back has averaged, like, I think, on the year he has maybe 122 yards on the year. So, for him to get to his, to get his running game, his game going, he's going to gonna, he gonna have to fight through a strong D in Houston, the Houston Cougars. So, it will be a lot of big plays. Expect a lot of big plays on offense from both teams. Uh, whichever defense step up and make some stops, get some turnovers, whichever defense win the turnover battle, I think comes out on top. But my prediction, I think Houston's going to come out on top on that, which later I will get into the rest of my prediction. But moving on, Alabama senior linebacker Tim Williams was arrested this morning with a misdemeanor gun charge. He was found with a gun that what he didn't have a permit for. Um Guys, we we can't keep getting caught with these guns. Uh, I don't. You shouldn't need a gun, really. You shouldn't put yourself in positions to need a gun. I know sometimes those situations come to you, but if you're not old enough to carry a gun, with if you're not old enough to get a permit, don't have a gun. You know you're targeted. You're a big time player, 
at Al at the University of Alabama. So we got to use our heads, guys. You know that you're targeted. And another reason that you're targeted, you're, you're a top football player in the country, and you're black. So you know you're going to be targeted. Come on, guys. We got to do better. Don't give them reasons to, to, to mess with us. We got to do better. Come on. We got to do better, man. We got to keep stop getting caught with these guns. We got to stop getting caught with these guns. Other news in Tuscaloosa, uh, Blake Barnett is set to transfer. Nick Saban did speak on it in his last press conference saying that he don't have much information on it. He's saying it's out of his control whether uh, Blake Barnett transfer. He wants Blake Barnett to do what he thinks is best for him. I know Nick Saban caught a lot of heat with the Maurice Smith situation with him transferring. He didn't want him to transfer to Georgia. But he, he said this is out of his hands. Whatever Blake Barnett thinks is best for his football career in the future, he's fine with that. Um, you know, Blake Barnett came into the season. He started the first game for Alabama. He got outplayed by Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts took over, and I think Blake Barnett is kind of like he's not gonna get. He see he's not gonna get much playing time. I kind of seen this coming. I knew one of them was gonna transfer pretty soon. I didn't know which quarterback, but I knew one was gonna transfer because Jalen Hurts is a freshman, which is a great freshman, and he's gonna be there for the next at least three years. So I knew that one of them was gonna get tired of playing back up and come in and um. Transfer. So we're moving on to Auburn. On yesterday, I had some conversations. I was just talking out while I was at the house, while I was in the neighborhood, in the community. Um, I was talking to some Auburn friends. They asked me, what do I think is Auburn's biggest problem and how can they fix it? Um, my To answer your question, Auburn red zone is their biggest troubles right now. Um, that's what needs to be fixed. That's what their focus needs to be on right now. I'm going to give you a couple stats to why I say that. Some stats to prove what I'm saying. Uh, their red zone stats, they have 22 attempts, attempts 17 scores, uh, which is their 91st in the FBS. Uh, seven touchdowns, their 90th in the FBS. Uh, they are 31.82 percent of scoring a touchdown in the red zone which is terrible that's 117th in the fbs they only have they have kicked 10 field goals in the red zone on this year which is first in the fbs but that's terrible you would want your kicker to have more extra points than actual field goals so that is terrible to be first in that uh, you would want your kicker to go uh, perfect six for six every game if he have to, but he shouldn't be put in that situation every game to have to kick six field goals to win a game. Uh, they're second worst in the nation in the red zone, so that's why I said this is their biggest problem. To fix this problem, I think they need to throw more jump balls to the corners to some of their bigger receivers. Keep the uh, offense off balance. Run some play actions. Uh, get Sean White out of the pocket. Give him that run pass option with the play action with the bootlegs and things of that nature. In the red zone, I think you should get your tight ends more involved. Um, hand the ball off. Well, I mean, play action. Come around. Drag your tight ends. Sort plays in the flats. Like I said, throw some deep balls to the, uh, throw some fade routes to the corner. Uh, get that inside slot, man. Run, run some uh, rub routes. You know what I'm saying? Get more creative in the red zone and keep the defense off balance. You just can't let them know that you're going to give the ball to Petway and um, carry on Johnson every single time you get in the red zone. Jet sweeps and Dive plays are not going to work every time in the red zone. So you need to keep the defense off balance. Like I said, throw some um, jump balls up, run some rub routes, run some play action, bootlegs, giving Sean White that run pass option. Even get uh, John Franklin involved in that run pass option type plays. That will help you a lot. I think that will solve your red zone troubles. So I hope I answered your question to the people that asked me that question. I hope I answered your question. If I didn't, um, let me know in the comments under this and I will um, try my best to get back with you and answer some more. Um, moving on, we're going to get... I want to give my list of quarterbacks, I think the top 10 quarterbacks in the nation right now. So um, starting with number one, 
I'm going to go with uh, Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson is the top um, quarterback in the country. He's um, doing a lot for his team. He's the main reason why his team is winning. So um, I think that he does a lot for his teams. So I think... Um, He's number one right now. Number two, I'm going to take JT Barrett. JT Barrett is just an undeniable talent. You know, um, he's great in the pocket. He can throw the ball downfield. He has great feet. He reads coverages. He's a great leader. He you can't deny his talent. He's coming in at number two. Number three, I have Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson was number one on my list coming into this season, but he's not been playing up to my expectation, the expectations I thought, I thought he was having a bigger year. So he gets to number three. And number four, I'm going to go with Chad Kelly. I know I'm going to get some bad lash with that, but I like Chad Kelly. Chad Kelly is a gunslinger. He um, scores a lot of points to give you a lot of opportunities. I think uh, Chad Kelly is coming at number four. Number five, I'm going to go with Deshaun Kaiser from Notre Dame. Number six, I'm going to go with Brad Kaya from Miami. And number seven, I'm going with Drew Locke from Missouri. And number eight, I'm going with Trevor Knight from Texas A&M. And number nine, I'm going to go with Greg Ward Jr. from Houston. And number 10, I'm going with David Well from California. That's my list. Um, I would love to see your list, well, who you think are the top. 10 quarterbacks, so um, I'm going to be posting that list in the groups that I am in, sports groups, so we can get some interaction. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts, so jump in those comments and let me know what you think. Okay, next, we're going to get into my predictions. Um, every Thursday, I'm going to come to you with my predictions for the uh, weekend of football coming up. Um... This week, we have some pretty good games, so I'm um, going to get into that. First, tonight, we have UConn versus Houston. I got Houston in that one. Um, Stanford versus Washington. I'm going to go with Stanford. I think McCaffrey has a big game. I think he put up big numbers. He's going to be too much for Washington's defense. Um, next, we have Florida versus Vandy. I think Florida's going to take that, even though they gave a 21-point lead to uh, Tennessee. I think they're going to um, put it together. I know McElwain has preached finish game, finish game, finish the game, finish the game all week long. I know last week I was saying that Ole Miss needs to be preaching. I said Hugh Freeze needs to be preaching at that practice. But this week it needs to be... Um, McElwain, Jim McElwain. So I know he's preached that. He's a great coach. He's a great football mind. So I'm going to pick forward in that one. Uh, FSU versus UNC. I'm going to go to Florida State. Um, I'm planning on trying to attend that game also this weekend. Tennessee versus UGA. I'm going to go with Tennessee. No, I'm going to go with Georgia. Excuse me. I'm going with Georgia on that. Um, Wisconsin versus Michigan. I went against Wisconsin on last week. So I'm riding with Wisconsin this week. I'm going to get Wisconsin beats Michigan. Oklahoma, TCU. I'm going with TCU. Kenny Hill, how big day. He's too much for Oklahoma's defense. Louisville, Clemson. I'm going to go with Clemson. I think Deshaun Watson turns it on. Have that big game on a big stage to uh, this weekend. Alabama, Kentucky. Alabama takes that big. Uh, Texas A&M, South Carolina. I'm going to go with Texas, uh, Texas A&M. Trevor Knight has a big day. Uh, Miami versus Georgia Tech. I'm going with Miami. Uh, Brad Kaya has a big day. Has a Heisman performance um, day. He's going to put up big numbers, and I think Miami take that over Georgia Tech. Um, still, shout out to my boy Tevin, which is on the coaching staff at Georgia Tech. But I think Kaya is going. Brad Kaya is going to be too much tonight. Um, like I said, I'm going to be posting those both of those lists in my uh, on my group pages on my. Um, business pages and I want to hear what you think um, that's all I have for you today uh, I want to remind you to go out and um, like all of my social media pages Twitter at True Sports Talk uh, Facebook I need a uh, True Sports Talk radio I would like for you to join our fan page at a uh, TST game day fan page so um, go and like all our social medias um, I would like to thank you for all of your support um, trying to do some something that's not been done here in this area of Wetumpka in Aramore County. So I thank you, thank you for all your support. I'm um, trying to do some big things with some high schools 
here um, locally, uh, Montgomery, Elmore County, Tallahassee, Eglipit. I'm trying to do a, I'm trying to do a lot of different things, some things that's never been done to bring more excitement into the city and within our high school football programs. So um, thank you for your support. I can't do it without you. I'm going to be trying to do some game day shows, a lot of different stuff. I'm already now doing highlights. You can go on my pages and check those out. I'm just trying to do a lot of things for the community to hype up this football year. And our high school, college, everything. I want to, I'm doing this so I, can, I know we have people from the local areas going off doing big things in the collegiate careers. So I would like to be able to cover those guys and bring your attention to those guys to follow their career outside of Elmore County. So with your support, it will happen. Um, like I said, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for tuning in. I am Marcus Johnson. This is TST Radio. Thank you for tuning in. I love you guys. Thank you for your support.